on today's episode. Welcome. Here are show repairs I've done and share the techniques and tools that I use. If you find this video valuable or even entertaining, uh, please subscribe as it really helps. It's great to get your feedback, so leave a comment below and don't forget to hit that like button. Also check out the description below because there'll be additional information and some useful links. Now I've been involved with uh, computers and networking for uh, approximately 40 years now, I guess, and uh, cut my teeth on good things like Burroughs Pulse Select protocols and uh, IBM 3270 cluster controllers and all that sort of goodness. So by this point in the game, uh, there's very little that uh, I find particularly exciting or, or interesting. And uh, many things are just a, a pain in the butt to configure and static IP addresses and such like. But I have something now which um, I, I have been uh, really impressed with. Now, this little guy, and next, any XX uh, little router uh, has uh, a couple of uh, Ethernet ports powered by uh, micro USB. Also has um, a little uh, USB connection there. Now, it's uh, marketed as a uh, compact portable mini wireless NAS router. Yes, that's uh, router guys, not router. A router is a woodworking tool as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, um, so this can be set up in a, in a variety of different modes to provide access to other computers, to storage. Um, for example, if you go to a, a business conference or meeting um, and you want to share files, you can set this guy up and either share it from a, from a NAS addressable uh, network addressable storage a USB stick or even an external hard drive uh, or just to extend uh, networking and in internet access um, similarly if you're uh, going to a party you can set it up to uh, to, to send music uh, and all all videos so it's a very flexible unit and uh, I'm quite impressed so to power this unit I'm just using a uh, standard uh, power bank it's just got an standard 18 650 selling it nothing special and uh, we can see on the on the display it's uh, drawing 180 190 just under 200 uh, milliampers so um, this will power it for a, a couple of hours at least obviously you have the choice of powering it from uh, either a larger power bank or a USB port on a on a laptop or on your computer uh, or, or from a, a regular phone charger type uh, type device. So again, uh, very flexible. Now to start configuring the unit, we just uh, applied the power, and all that you need to do is simply go to your wireless settings, and you'll find uh, the the next router. Uh, it's open, so you don't have to worry about. Uh, any passcode or pin number or anything like that so now we can see that uh, it's connected but obviously telling us there's there's no internet so now we can go to our browser of choice and put in the default address of the router which is 192.168.8.1 as explained in the in the manual and you're simply provided with um, the options here and we're presented with the simple options home and dormitory, hotel, uh, access point mode, Wi-Fi, network addressable uh, storage. So uh, it's very simple to, for example, in here, um, most settings are you just leave it at the default. So this will get its IP address from um, the router that you connected to. And next, uh, just gives you the wireless settings obviously in here you would normally set the security but we don't need to do that in this case and and that's it you just press apply now uh, when you press apply f uh, for when you're changing the the uh, the type of uh, functionality it will automatically reboot which i think is is neat as well it's so frustrating you get into a router config and it says hey you need to restart your router to apply this well, yeah, I know, I just changed it. 
anyway that's me so here we can see the configuration that we've just set up um, called home and dormitory so uh, from the the wide area network the WAN port we put a cable to our, our ISP uh, now that may be a cable modem it could be um, ADSL or, or, or whatever but um, that's where the the router gets its um, IP address from and the uh, other information it needs and then we can connect our various devices either via a fixed cable so if you maybe have a have an old tower system or something you can connect up that and obviously all your wireless devices your mobile uh, laptops tablets etc so that's the the config that we've just set up if we take a look at the router now that was the the setting we used we can go into the status and see on the internet side it's connected successfully and we've got our IP address and subnet mask we've got our default gateways and uh, the DNS servers and obviously that's routing through to our local network uh, with our, our, on our network address of 8.1 and other devices so um, the other thing that we can see here is the, um, the ID of the of the uh, wireless side of things and the security mode which is open so we can also see that um, it's connected if we open up another tab now and we go to uh, Google we can see we have our, our local internet service so here's the next uh, configuration we're going to look at which is the network addressable storage so this is essentially the same configuration as we did before only we've uh, added uh, in this case a, a pen drive into the unit so that we can share files uh, music videos or whatever um, to other devices I'll show that in the in the photo very simply and looking at the configuration for the device itself obviously we just go into the Wi-Fi NAS and it's pretty much all, all set up for you so you can access the device via Samba uh, as a FTP server or DLNA so it's all all pretty much set up for you there's nothing you need to do there and as I plug the, the drive in it's already made a, a directory listing of, of what's on the on the pen drive so all we have to do is to to test it so in terms of the, the search box there and backslash backslash 192.168.8.1 and log in we can see the uh, contents of the drive here and the internal this is the external drive and there's all our, our files so uh, whatever it is that we wish to uh, to view is shared directly from the from the server So as you can see it's a really simple configuration and uh, very very useful indeed. So here we're going to look at the access point mode or hotel mode and uh, this is a very simple setup um, just to share a, a wired connection uh, with your, your, your wireless devices to effectively uh, provide a, a hub function. So looking at the configuration just one thing to note as you hover over this uh, I can't move down there but if you see in the bottom left hand corner it actually says OV underscore bridge now when you go into the access point configuration the only thing that you can change is the network the wireless network name and obviously enable the security which uh, in a hotel environment you'd, uh, you'd obviously want to do uh, there's nothing else so effectively when you set this up um, it acts on the on the WAN side if you will as a bridge so if we go to apply this 
the actual router takes uh, maybe 10, 20 seconds to reset itself. Once we've got into this mode, um, it will have actually gone into its, its bridge function. And if we look at the uh, details for the wireless adapter, we can see that its address is no longer in the um, 192.168.8 um, uh, network. Um, it's, it's bridged to the information that it's got directly from uh, the, uh, the network connection. So um, when, when we go back to our uh, web page, uh, we can't see anything because we cannot get back to that net. But obviously, if we go uh, to the internet, uh, we can see that we have, in fact, our, our internet connection is, is working fine. It's just that it's in bridge mode. So to get back to the, the menu on the bridge from, uh, from this mode, you will need to press the, the reset button on the device and reset it back to uh, the, the factory settings. Then you can get back to change the configuration to whatever it is that you, you want. So the final mode we're going to look at is the repeater. Now, uh, this is a, again is a very simple configuration and I'm not entirely sure why they put this link in. Um, it's uh, not the case in, in this repeater mode. What we're gonna be doing is connecting to an existing uh, Wi-Fi uh, source, Wi-Fi router, for example, and simply repeating it so that we can pick it up from our other devices. This is most often used. Um, maybe you're getting too far away for your uh, phone or, or, or tablet to pick up the, the signal directly. So you want to put this device, say, halfway between where your device is and the, and the, the source of the, of the signal. So let's look and see how that's set up. And if we look at Wi-Fi repeater, we can see that um, it's scanned and found the various networks that it can uh, connect to and we just simply need to choose one of these networks and it fills in the the information on the channel number and uh, the and, and, and change those uh, but normally you would leave those the same so that your device whether it's near to the, uh, the origin of the, of, of the signal or it's near to the repeater, you don't have to change the, um, the, the configuration of the device. So I'd leave that all as, as standard. What you do need to do is to put in your uh, Wi-Fi password and then connect. So as before, we can look into the status of the device. Uh, connected successfully now and got all its IP address information from the originating uh, source. We can see that the, the local address now is still uh, 8.1. So uh, as before, we can say open a, a new tab, go to our, our, our internet. So we've taken a look at uh, the four basic modes of operation for this little guy. And uh, as I said at the outset, um, I'm really impressed with it. Uh, you can see it uh, is no size at all, so there's no excuse not for, for packing it. Uh, if you're going away on a, on a business trip or even just on, on holiday, um, you know that if you get stuck, um, you can probably save the day by pulling this little guy out of your pocket and, uh, and, and setting it up. Now there is more to this guy. Um, I would like to cover some of the um, things that you can do between Android uh, devices, between, say, a smartphone and, uh, and a tablet, uh, but I think this, that will be uh, something for uh, another review. Um, also, it is possible to port uh, what's known as the OpenWRT uh, router software onto here, and that gives it uh, many other possibilities as well. But uh, for the moment, um, I suggest you pick one of these guys up.